Meeting to order, the Breezy Point City Council, Monday, February 1st, 2021. First order of business is Pledge of Allegiance. Everybody please stand. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right. Well, welcome everyone tonight to the meeting. Next order of business on, is consent agenda. We'll start off with A, uh, council minutes, January 4th, 2021, and January 25th, 2021 workshop. That was the goal setting workshop that the council participated in a week ago this last Monday. Um, so hopefully everybody on council has had a chance to review those minutes and look them over. Uh, B, approval of claims uh, totaling 42,144.85. That includes electronic checks 2698 through 2700 and paper checks 136534 to 136596. Uh, next piece on the consent agenda is approved payment to Crow Wing County for shared road project. Again, uh, council should have had a chance to review that in their packet to see what that was for. Um, and uh, that was the final uh, piece for um, the re-updating um, of the Osmond Key Road. So you um, should have seen the information on that. Uh, D is authorized sale of a forfeited golf cart. Um, again, that is uh, the department forfeited the 1990 golf uh, cart and the case is now complete. So the requested action by the police department is to authorize the sale of the golf cart with any proceeds being distributed according to law. We would place the cart up for bids when the weather permits. Um, and then the next one is to adopt resolution 05-2021 accepting donations to the police department. Uh, and this is to accept a donation from Joanne, Joan Anderson for $100 in the amount of that amount to the donation of the police department. Um, next, moving on, F, item F is to approve Bobcat UV34 purchase. This is um, to replace the 2006 Polaris Ranger that the Public Works used um, and they use it for their park, sewer, and public works maintenance. Uh, and under uh, the CIP of the 2021 budget, 10000 was the estimated replacement cost. Um, and there was a quote uh, received for that. and see what that is. And basically, uh, Joe Zierden, public works director, is asking uh, for approval to go ahead with the purchase of that, uh, that <coughs> new uh, Bobcat to replace the Ranger, and the Ranger would then be sold uh, as a trade-in, so that would be part of the trade-in. Uh, he feels that's the best uh, way that we can get the value out of it. Um, and then last, G has approved payment to Widseth Engineering for road study. Of course, the road study was reviewed uh, with the council at the last uh, meeting in January, um, and so that's to approve the payment uh, at that time. So that's the consent agenda items. Um, do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda items as listed in uh, red? So moved, moved, Mr. Mayor, with one question, if I may. Okay, so I had, uh, I think, a motion. I'll second. Member, I'll second. A second I'll there. Second, Bakken. whatever. Yep, and now discussion by Councilmember Bakken. Um, item D, forfeited golf cart. What's the story on that? Actually, if there's any discussion on any consent item, it needs to be pulled specifically and then added to the agenda later on. So moved. Fine. Push it down the road. I don't think we understand it here. Do you want to talk about it later in the meeting? I want to know why the golf cart was forfeited. What reason? So then my suggestion, your mayor, would be to put it under Gary Bakken under the council of case. Yes, we can do that. Thank you. Everything but that item. Yep. So, so we'll remove item D, uh, the authorization sale of forfeited golf cart. That will be moved down to the agenda under uh, committee reports, and council member Bakken can address it uh, at that time. Um, is there any other discussion? Council Member Maroney, any discussion? No. Council Member Millen? No, sir. Council Member Wall? No. Council Member Bakken, any further discussion? No, sir. All right, all those signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, moving on. The next item on the agenda, item four, is open forum. Um, is there anybody here that wishes to address the council at this time in open forum? All right. Please approach. If you're going to address, you need to list your name, address, and then state what it is that you're addressing the council on. My name is Steve Jensen. Okay. I live at 29668 Shoreview Lane, Unit 905. I, I want to address the council regarding your uh, looking into tightening the rules for rental property within the city. Okay. Um, as it stands now, I guess conditional use permits are granted by the city. And the number of parking spaces are based off of the number of bedrooms. Okay. And I don't see that there's any process or nobody is said that there is a formal process. How do they get the conditional use of permit? Mm -hmm. Do they go through an inspection? Is there any audits throughout the year? Mm -hmm. What is the city doing to monitor that? Mm -hmm. Because you're impacting the lives of residents. So case in point, on Shoreview Lane, there's three rental units, all built by the same developer. You have 29700, 29706, Breezy Point Beach Units. You have the timeshares, 29714, 29720. VRBO, 29730, 29736. The VRBOs, for whatever reason, have never been a problem. I don't know if they're still a VRBO, they're still being rented, but if they are, the city should be talking to these people because they're model citizens. They don't rent to large groups. Timeshares, yes, there's problems, and it's parking for the residents. There's not enough parking spaces, so the overflow goes to private property. The rental units for the resort, they're a problem. They're a big problem. They rent to huge groups. It's a, it's a favorite spot for bachelor parties, guys golf weekends, large groups, lots of alcohol. And those units are advertised as two bedroom, which would, that's how the conditional use permit is granted. Go on their website. They have a loft <coughs> with a queen bed. They have pull out couch and they rent to large groups. They bring in, you know, sleeping bags, air mattresses. So the city's granting these permits without verifying how many people these units sleep. And that's a problem. That's a huge problem. And it needs to be addressed. If you're going to allow rental property, and let's face it, it's a resort community. I get it. But you need to take a look at what you're currently doing and change it for the future and rescind them if necessary. Um, it's very frustrating that you don't get any help from the city. And part of the process for enforcement you need to look at is if renters park on private property by state law, the police department cannot do anything. So what you're doing is putting that burden on residents. Getting sworn at, threatened, we shouldn't have to deal with that. That is flat out wrong. You need to do something about it. Now in the resort's defense, Hammy, the operations manager, has made great strides. They have <coughs> tried. Um, they hand out diagrams. They tell people, don't park your pickup trucks, your boats. They don't listen. I mean, <coughs> New Year's Eve, my neighbor who was here, we both got sworn at by a couple young kids. They flat out parked on our property. The resort hadn't even plowed the driveways. We had like, what, four plus inches of wet snow. I got a hold of Cammie, who I know, and it was just pure dumb luck, because if she's not around, nothing will be done. Mm -hmm. 
She got him out there, plowed. But you shouldn't have to be sworn at. This is getting old. You know, this is a serious issue. I mean, there was a big article in the Star Tribune. A lot of cities are choosing not to do rental property for these very reasons, noise and parking issues. I mean, I don't know, it was like a two full page article in the Star Tribune. Mm -hmm. So you need to take a serious look and put a you know, moratorium on these until you can get your arms around what, what can you do? How can you enforce it? If, you, if your police can't enforce parking, what are you gonna do? I mean, it makes no sense to have them. Sure. And just, you know, this isn't a direct attack on the resort. I 100% support the resort. I know Bob Spiesel personally. I mean, my son has been married there. It's not an attack on them. They've done what they can. This is just, they happen to own the two rental units that are causing all the issues, period. So I guess I ask that uh, the city takes a deeper dive into this. This is a serious issue and it needs to be addressed. Thank you, Mr. Jensen. We'll definitely take another right. advisement. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else that wishes to address the council at this time? Okay. Come forward, state your name and your address, and what is the issue that you'd like to talk to the council about? My name is Brian McConville. I live at 9075 Sunset Strip. I'm here to <coughs> talk about the petition that's on the agenda for uh, later <coughs> for the decision. So what I would ask is when we get to that point in the agenda, I'll allow you to come back up and speak okay. to the issue at that time, if that's Very okay good. with you, Mr. Yep. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to address the council at this time? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move on to uh, item five, uh, mayor and city council updates and committee reports. Um, I'll start off. Just a few comments. First of all, I, I want to take the time again to thank the council for their work last Monday at our uh, workshop that we had goal setting. I thought it was very valuable. Uh, I think there was a lot of good things came out of it and a lot of different levels. Um, we all know that we've got some work to do and the committees have some work to do, but I think we're all committed to that. So I just wanted to thank you all again for your time and your work on that. Very much appreciated. Um, just to start off with uh, myself uh, and uh, the city administrator attended uh, the fire department quarterly uh, meeting this last Wednesday uh, at uh, Pequot Lakes. Of course, Pequot uh, Lakes does uh, give us our service through contracts for fire department. And so we attended the meeting and uh, just a few brief updates. There were this, um, uh, this fourth quarter, there were uh, last fourth quarter of the year, there were six calls uh, in Breezy Point. Uh, overall, there were 17 calls. So there wasn't uh, a lot of activity, but definitely some. Um, so we talked about that. Other things covered at the meeting was the budget uh, for this upcoming year for the fire department. Uh, they did show a slight increase in their budget in regards to costs. Um, and then we did talk to them a little bit about some surplus that they had in their budget and ask them where that goes, what happens to it, um, and it gets rolled over into the next year's budget to be used uh, in that regard. Um, one of the other things that was uh, definitely talked about during that time, uh, city administrator and I both uh, discussed with them, was uh, to have uh, Pequot um, address the idea of long range replacement of their equipment. And uh, to that extent, there was actually a motion taken uh, by the group uh, to go to the city council in Pequot and uh, talk to them about putting a plan in place of how to um, uh, replace the equipment as we look out over the next few years and where's the funding going to come from that and how is that going to work. Um, and and uh, there were others within the meeting that expressed uh, interest in, in that as well, wanting to make sure that uh, everybody knew what the plan was and how it was going to be done and how was that going to impact everybody with regards to the services that they contract out with the um, uh, with the fire department for. So I think all overall it was a positive uh, meeting um, and uh, there was uh, um, some good information shared. Of course, a few things. Uh, we encouraged them to continue giving us the addresses to all the fire calls that we have in the city so that we know exactly where they're coming from just in case there's... Um, an ongoing issue that, that we can help address or help that out with. So um, overall, that went very well. Um, 
And then just a brief update on uh, short-term rentals. Um, there, a final draft language for short-term rentals was sent to the attorneys. It was just sent in this last week. Um, and the attorney has, did not at this time give us a timeline and when they would be getting it back to us. But once that gets back with the attorney having, our city attorney having reviewed the language, uh, then the next step in the process will take place. Uh, and we'll be moving forward with uh, looking at that. And of course, that will include eventually uh, public input uh, meetings uh, with regards to that short-term rental uh, policy and, and ordinance that's, that we're looking at. So, um, so that's what I have uh, from my uh, side for some updates. Um, we're going to move on to B, council members. Um, council member Maroney, road committee, um, or uh, uh, planning and zoning, anything? anything? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that caught me off guard. I'm like, whoa, well, yeah. just a meeting there. Road committee. Uh, road committee. Uh, the city did receive a official complaint regarding some street parking issues. Might have been related here. Um, so the road committee is setting up a meeting here, um, potentially later next week. Um, okay. To meet and discuss the funds that back for that. Excellent. Did you have anything else from any other uh, pieces that you're involved with? Uh, no, I could, I could probably speak on I, I speak <laughs> with the chief. Um, at our goal session planning, we talked about the golf court kind of uh, either get together or training, or, you know, just to help. And so we've got the wheels turning on what we can do with that. So. Excellent. Great to hear. Thank you, Councilmember Maroney. Is, is your mic on? Yeah. Best one, two. I don't know. Yeah, I can hear him. Bye. <laughs> You're a lot quieter than that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Speak up. We'll I wouldn't need the mic, actually. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, okay, so moving on. Uh, planning and zoning, Councilmember Miller. Uh, planning and zoning met uh, as scheduled in the month of January. Um, they uh, continued um, a variance request uh, for a <sighs> conditional uh, use permit um, regarding... Uh, shoreline uh, off of Fawn Lake Road. Uh, they were going to look into um, some feedback from the DNR regarding re regarding what it would cost to rebuild that shoreline if if it was even possible. Uh, it was probably an educated decision for uh, planning and zoning to you know gather more informa information before making a decision. Okay, so it sounds like you'll be moving that forward to the next meeting then. We, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Anything else that you'd care to report on at this time with regards to things that you've been engaged with? Uh, no, no, nothing further okay. at this time. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Ball, anything from you? I don't have anything to report. No. I know that maybe eventually, based on our goals, maybe the Personnel Committee may be looking at some things for us with the goal setting. So that could be you and Michael too. as well working on that. So, okay, excellent. Council Member Bach and uh, Park Committee. No, sir, nothing. Right, it's nothing. But item 3D, you want to talk about it this time? Yes. Do you want to talk about the the piece that we pulled off the consent agenda? Oh, the four. Yes. I've never heard of a golf cart being forwarded ever since I've been here. I'm wondering why. Was it a violation or was it a city golf course that they're forfeiting to sell? It was a private individual who was who made the newspaper for the number of DWIs that that individual had. <laughs> yeah. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. So that's. So you do need to take action to approve that. Yes. Yes. So. So moved. Okay. So I have a motion from Council Member Bakken to approve uh, the sale of the tax forfeited uh, golf cart that we have at the police department. I have a second. I'll second said motion. Second from Council Member Miller. Discussion. Council Member Maroney. None. Council Member Miller? None. Council Member Ball? None. Council Member Bakken, any discussion? No, sir. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> All right. So moving on then, we're moved down to item number six, administrator and staff reports. A, respond to <laughs> request to detach from the city of Brizzy Point. Um, at this time, I would I'd like to call the citizen back up to be able to speak to this point. So if you'd come forward again, please state your name and your address.
Sure, it's Brian McConville, 9075 Sunset Strip. Um, I brought the petition in on behalf of the, our neighbors. Our, uh, the area that we're talking about um, is off Osman Winnemakee Road. Uh, it starts where the townhomes are, the Omerty Point townhomes, and then moves west through uh, <coughs> Graff Road. There's 61 parcels in that area, 70 acres approximately, with 55 owners. Uh, 54 of those owners covering 60 of the parcels signed off on the petition uh, of our request to uh, detach. Uh, our main justification for doing it is that IDEAL uh, provides uh, our road maintenance, our plowing, ditch mowing. They do a really good job of it, by the way, but um, uh, just, and they do that because it's cost effective for the city. At least that's what I've heard in the past. Um, and it's cost effective because to get to our neighborhood from here requires you to drive two miles through uh, Ideal Township uh, to get there. So we feel it's important to have a vote, a voice and voting rights in the community that's providing us with those essential services. And we also think uh, that our local tax dollars are from our property taxes should also be going to that community. So we ask that you consider that uh, uh, in your deliberations before responding to our petition. Thank you very much. Thank I you. appreciate you <clears throat> providing. Do I have somebody else that would like to speak on this issue? Okay. Come forward. Let's state your name and your uh, address. My please. name is John Parrington. I reside, I actually reside at 9570 Oswald McKee Road, which is actually Ideal Township. But I also have a property at 9217 which is in Breezy Point, which is part of this property. And first of all, I'd like to thank all the members of the uh, council for the format here, because as a uh, former can as a cancer survivor and somebody with an underlying respiratory issue and being 70 years old, uh, I was a little anxious about coming here. So I want to say thank you for that. Uh, I, I think <clears throat> what I'd like to do is just start out and say a, a few facts about where we are and, and the road so that all the members of the council understand the situation that we have there. Uh, if you go along Oswood and McKee Road, the vast majority of houses and residences on that road are in the ideal township. <laughs> if you go along that road and go up the natural, to the natural end of it, which is Winnemaki Shores, the vast majority of houses on the lake are in Ideal Township. <clears throat> if you start traveling down the road from 39, down Oswinamaki Road, the first seventh, seven tenths of a mile, the houses on the lake are in Ideal Township. The next set, three tenths of a mile, they're in Breezy Point. The next four tenths of a mile, they're back in Ideal Township. And then the balance, which is where we are, is in Breezy Point. <laughs> to me, it seems a little <coughs> strange and a little nonsensical to go down the road and have ideal, breezy, ideal, breezy, that type of thing. Uh, one of the petitioning parties, which is at 9559, has a house and a guest house. His house is an ideal. His guest house is in Breezy. <laughs> all on the same piece of property, which it, to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <clears throat> and I will tell you, having been in Ideal for a while before I got into Breezy, uh, there's quite a bit of contention up and down the road between the Ideal residents and the Breezy residents for a number of different things. One, for example, there's a set of zoning regulations for Ideal and a different set of zoning regulations for Breezy. And I'll tell you a practical example. Where my property is, up the road, there's a couple of properties there that are vacant, that are in Ideal Township. But the res people who own those properties, who do plan on building on them, they have outbuildings already built to store things in. Now, where I am at 9217 in Breezy, I can't do that. But they can. And, and, and that type of thing produces some uh, uh, contention between the residents. Now, when I was first there, and, and, and the one thing that I saw in the report was the issue of the new road being put in. Um, I will just tell you, uh, I've been uh, on the road since 2005, 
Um, I didn't know that the new road was going in. And I've been told, and I may be wrong on this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I've been told that the people in Breezy got assessed for it as a special assessment. I, in Ideal, did not get a special assessment. That's a huge point of contention with the people up and down the road. Unfortunately, we are not a community along that road the way we should be, I can tell you that. We are a community down at Breezy Point where all we Breezy Point people live. We're a very close community. But the rest of the road where you have ideal breezy, ideal breezy, there's all this contention amongst people, which I think is not a very good thing. And I, I can just tell you, and it's already history, but there's a lot of people who really didn't want the road widened and the speed limit raised. I'm sure you know that a couple of years ago, we had a very serious accident along the road. In fact, it was my next door neighbor. They were parked on the side of the road in a, uh, I think it was a ranger or something, some lady who'd been drinking, at least I understand, crossed the road, hit them. The, the wife got pretty seriously injured. The little boy, fortunately, wasn't terribly injured. But, you know, the speed limit got raised to 35 with the resurfacing. We now have cars going down there 35 to 40 miles an hour regularly. Fortunately, where we are, it's a big open area. Where I was before, there was a curve there. and People come around that curve, and you're afraid of your child going out and getting hit. <coughs> the other thing that I will say is that uh, many, with regard to the road, is many of the people who have signed the petition are new residents. I am a new resident of Breezy, although I'm an old resident in Ideal. I know of seven or eight new residents that have come in, into the property. Uh, there's a couple of other things that I wrote notes to myself about. Um, I talked about the, the building codes. I talked about the ordinances. Um, I don't think and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think anybody along the road anywhere has objected to the detachment that I know of. Is there any record of any objection by anybody? Who asked me? I ask. Is there? I haven't seen any. I haven't heard of any objection. You guys provided the survey, or the petition to us. We didn't do any of this okay. talking to yeah. residents. You didn't so. provide what the survey, or what they actually signed either. All right. Um, <coughs> Uh, uh, and I think the other thing that's important, as I'm sure some of the council members know, there's already been at least two detachments generally in the area from Breezy Point. The first one, I think, was Mary Ebnett and Pat Ebnett. And then after that, I think it was the other Ebnett son with the sand pit and a number of other uh, property owners. So the detachment thing is not, you know, it's not something brand new to the neighborhood. I just think it makes sense to have that whole road <laughs> be all one city and we're all one neighborhood, all supporting the same thing. That, to me, is what's important. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> is there anybody else who'd like to come forward to address this issue? Yep. <laughs> Okay, so um, staff, do you have anything that you'd like to share with the council as well on regarding this issue? Okay, so in addition to your council package, I'll just back up to the first, to the memo itself. <clears throat> Talked about the process that we're looking at. Um, as far as receiving the petition, I talked with the state of Minnesota. They are received, They are looking for an answer tomorrow. They need to start the timelines. Um, they have not been served yet. I understand Ideal has been received this also, but the state has not. Um, there is some question as to, in their document itself, and I, I gave the council everything up to where it started the, the signatures, and maybe I should show you what was actually signed. So, Deb, we're going to try to go with the um, overhead. Maybe you can put that on the screen. There we go. There we go. So this is actually what we received 61 pages or 60 pages of 61 property owners. It doesn't identify what they signed for. They're just saying that they signed a document that the, for the parcel number and the date that they signed it. And we have 60 pages of that. Typically when I've received petitions over the years, 30 years, 
they identified the document shows exactly why they're signing for it. And there's space here where they could have easily shown that, that what each person was signing for. So there's a little concern um, on the city attorney's part that we're not sure exactly what these people knew they were signing for. And I brought that up in the staff report. Um, I guess as long as I'm up here, I'll talk about this. The legal description provided by the applicants um, was unclear to me. I spent a little bit of time trying to figure out, and I would get, so I sent it to our city engineer who has surveying staff, and what I'm gonna identify is what they've shown us or talked about that they'd like to, to detach. However, what they legally described was the three parcels in red, so they didn't even provide a accurate legal description, somewhat concerning. Um, I guess we can, that'll all have to be drawn out if the council decides to argue this. Or maybe Ideal Township would like to take that piece too. I'm not sure on that, but if they, not sure where Ideal Township exactly stands on this. Part of what the application identifies is that the city of Breezy Point does not provide services to that street. The city of Breezy Point and Ideal Township have had a shared road agreement for many years, and there are numerous areas where uh, we plow we maintain, they plow, we yeah. maintain. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a common courtesy when you have a shared roadways. Uh, sometimes it makes sense um, for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> and uh, the council should recall that you just adopted that agreement most recently in January. We did. For another yes. three years. Yes. Additionally, I, I handed out to each of you a draft copy of a resolution. Our city attorney, after I sent out the council packet, asked that I make sure the council look at drafting a resolution. Uh, there's a variety of whereas is in there. I mean, obviously this is land that is urban and suburban in character. It's paved. The lots are typically <coughs> around the size of 100 feet wide. You can see that on their map. They're consistently. The other parcels that were identified as being detached in the past were 326 acres of large tracts of land. Specifically, no residents were on those is what was identified in 2010. This one, however, they've already identified 47 separate residents already there. Most of these lots have already been subdivided as small as they're going to get for residential purposes. Um, the other part of it is we can document service, other services that we've provided, specifically police and fire. I've talked to several of our police officers who have stopped and talked to residents on Osawanaminiki. And we can document again the calls that have been made there. And we did that research, I want to say a year ago. But the fact is, we do provide other services, not just uh, street through a contract agency. But we do provide the fire and police specifically to that area. Um, the city adopted a comprehensive plan last year. And it is in the, back, the very bottom of what we added this today. So I apologize. I'm going to zoom down to the back. The last page. We're this is a on. copy of the comprehensive plan. Yep, she's switching us oh, back. Yep, yep. Thank you. And on there, you can see where uh, the top half of Asawana Miniki is, <laughs> where the gentleman talked about. Um, portion is in, portion isn't in. Uh, uh, what's an ideal? But again, these lots and I, of the 61 of them parcels as identified and they've identified, 47 have residential structures already on them. If you look into other areas of the city, um, it's actually better built out than many of the areas of the city of Breezy Point. So it is urban and suburban in nature. Um, then we've got some other language about laws, policies, uh, fundamentally, fundamental issues, environmental concerns. And then as part of this, uh, for the council's purposes, um, you would either add or subtract the whereas's and identify if it's a motion to approve or a motion to deny. And with the supporting, I, I've got three different items there that talk about your uh, opposes or you support it, <coughs> you, know, you deny or approve. Um, and then you uh, direct the city administrator to make the state of Minnesota aware of uh, your action. Be willing to answer any questions the council has? I think I addressed most of the questions. Okay. Council members, do you have any specific questions for staff? I have none. I'm ready to make a motion. I 
Oh, sorry, Geichel, did you have one? I, I, didn't, I didn't know if you raised your hand. Sorry if I didn't mean to cut you out there. So, approval of a detachment from the city of Breezy Point would be a support. Would would could potentially be an escape from the assessments, a, a potential road assessment. Is that is that what I'm to understand based oh. on the language in that whereas paragraph? If if it was approved, is that the truth that if the road was Im improved then that it would be th at the expense of the Breezy Point residents at large that are left in the city limits? Say, uh, let me back up a little bit, maybe summarize. Um, I talked with the city attorney late on Friday about this. Uh, there was no definitive case study, specifically on a detachment where there's been a road improvement with assessments. <coughs> so there, we're not clear. We do believe that the courts would side with the city of Breezy Point so that because it's already been uh, assessed to their property that the assessments would specifically get paid. But again, in this case, the city tax dollars were used to pay their half of the, the part that wasn't assessed. <clears throat> that is unclear if we would get reimbursed for that. And we would uh, argue in court that that's something we should get paid for at a very minimum. But otherwise, it's um, you have the situation where Ideal Township asked the city to do the improvement, and then all of a sudden they're receiving the benefit of a $100,000 improvement and take the road the next year. <clears throat> Understood. Thank you. Um. Patrick, could you tell us what, do you know what that amount is that the city paid for a part of that road improvement? I can, I, I know that when the council approved it, the uh, amount <coughs> approved was 189,420. Okay. Now the cost came in better. And right. so there was less than that, but I, I know we just paid some bills and I have not totaled them all up. But we definitely, the city of Breezy Point is responsible for a definite part of the debt of the improvement of that road. Significantly over $80,000. Um, and then um, just another question I had is in regards to the tax base of those parcels, um, you know, uh, is there a, a number out there of what we potentially are looking at? If those, if those parcels detach and are no longer a part of our tax base? I've got, again, very rough numbers. I wouldn't <coughs> go into court with these numbers, right. but... Uh, we were in 2018 taxes. The county total, I mean, the total paid out looks to be about $138,000. The city receives approximately uh, $58,000. Okay. And that's, and I've got some blank numbers in there, so right. I'm not gonna say right. these are. And that's 2018, so it's, so it's three years, two years outdated for sure. So. And let alone right. there's been yep. houses built yep. since that time and everything, yep. yes. Right. But ultimately, definitely uh, some tax base that would be gone there as a result of that, okay. Council Member Maroney, you had something that you want to add? Mr. Mayor, a, a question for you or, or um, this is the attorney here who dropped it off by me. Um, what prompted NAMP? I mean, these lots have been appropriate with the city of Breezy Point for many years. Yep. Can I ask what prompted it to happen today? Yeah. I, I don't have an answer for that. I don't know if there is an answer for that. And I, they have, they haven't, I mean, beyond what they've given us in the, in the petition that they've given to us, <clears throat> there, there wasn't anything that showed or, or that I could see uh, that, go ahead. I thought he specifically wanted to ask that question of the applicant. Is that something that we can ask? Them? Sure, yes. Brian, can you sure you enlighten us on why today and, you know, these lots have been incorporated at the city of Breezy Point for decades? Yeah, well, I moved here just two years ago, so for me, this is a recent activity, and certainly um, inertia was built based on the road improvement from last year, and uh, the neighbors were not real happy about that. So I'd say the timing of that uh, was a big part of it, but from my perspective, uh, I don't know anything about 10 years and 20 years ago. I just know in the last two years. So since I've been here, I've been thinking, why in the heck is this neighborhood part of Breezy when we're right next to, we're surrounded on three sides by water and mm -hmm. to the north by Ideal, and it took us this long uh, to get the job done. So we started on this petition process last spring, and uh, that's when the momentum first came in to, uh, let's go ahead and do it. So. Last spring. Okay, thank you. Thank you. May I respond to something? Uh, yes, I will allow you to come forth and respond. 
As I said, I'm John Carrington again. As I said before, I came to this project uh, late. So the thing that seemed to me that, uh, that answer your question that prompted this was the road improvement. That was one of the things that was highly contentious. I think another thing that's helped uh, bring it along is that there's a lot of, a number of the properties are empty lots. And I think as people have been buying them and looked to building them, they've looked and said, well, wait a minute, why do I have a set of ordinances like this, and yet two houses down, they have a different set of ordinances? That doesn't make sense. But I would like to correct the record to what the gentleman said. It is not urban property, and it is not suburban property. If you look at the 2010 census, United States census, the last census, and if you look at it closely, it defines this property as rural. If you look at the state standards, the state standards say, and I don't know exactly the number, but I think it's like 45 or 4,600 people or less is defined as rural. And if you look at on the city site as to the population, I remember looking at it and it's rural by like 300 people. <laughs> but it is rural, it's rural property. It is not urban. It's not an urban district. All right, thank you. I appreciate your added comments. Okay, any other comments before? I know Council Member Bakken. Council Member Ball, did you have anything to add? Anything you'd like to say? No, I don't. Okay. Council Member Bakken, you I'll move the like motion, you Mr. Mayor. Motion. Under the following stipulations. And the research I've done on this project, having been involved in three comp plans, current one the fourth, and the planning that's gone in to this area and many other areas. I approve and move a resolution in opposition okay. to this. Every whereas on page one, I have read three times, and they are all accurate in my lengthy experience. Okay. On the back page, I would also move now for it be resolved by the council, the city of Breezy Point hereby opposes adopting city of Breezy Point respectfully request the state of administration hearing to deny the separation. End of motion. Mayor DeMotion, do I have a second? A second. I have a second from Council Member Ball. Discussion. Council Member Maroney, anything to discuss? Council Member Ball, do you have anything to add to the discussion? Uh, just, I, I appreciate you coming and, and speaking here today and all the work that you've done, everything you've put together. I think that at this time, um, it doesn't appear to me to meet the requirements um, of the statute and um, my reason for agreeing with Councilman Bakken. Councilman you know my opinion. Okay. Councilman Member Miller. Miller. So I'm familiar with Mary and Ted Ebnett. I work with the Ebnets. Um, I'm familiar with their detachment. And that was true rural agricultural land, in my opinion. Uh, the north side of Lake Ossie is much further developed than Wild Acres Road. So, you know, in addition, based on the areas defined by the petition with a massive strip in the middle missing based on uh, legal parcel definition, uh, I, I can in good conscience approve this, approve the detachment. Okay. Um, we've heard discussion uh, from all the members of council. Um, for myself, uh, I would say that um, based on the information that I've had, the research I've done, um, that I uh, agree with the motion. Um, you know, uh, I look at the investment that the city has made in the road. I look at the services that the, that the city does provide. We do have a cooperative <coughs> road agreement with Ideal. We do jointly work on those roads together. 
uh, we do provide fire and service to them. Uh, and so those are services that are provided. I will state that yes, I understand that there is a great variance between ideal townships ordinances and Brizzy Point's ordinances with regards to building. I understand that. <clears throat> I see that. Uh, ultimately, we are the city of Brizzy Point. We have our ordinances in place that's done so for specific reasons. An ideal has done what they've decided to do with their ordinances with regards to their people in their township with the specific reasons that they have in mind. So that, yes. Todd, I was wondering if the motion and the seconder would agree that we could identify as part of the uh, legal description, noting that the legal description is incorrect and we could attach a map showing what we have. Agreed. Oh, I'm sorry, Rebecca Mason. Agreed. Yes. Okay. Just to clarify that. Yep. Listen, Mr. Mayor, a uh, question yes. also for staff. Yes. The signature lines that we've received, <clears throat> they seem accurate or incomplete right. as well. I don't know if that's a finding of fact as well. Yeah, I would believe so that it is. I don't know if that, again, is something part of the whereas that the motion Are you two okay with that? Yes, I think that's yes. a good point. Yes. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those by, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. All right, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, item 6B. Bushman Road Cooperative Road Project Update, Adopt Resolution 06-2021. Staff, do you have anything that you'd like to state on this? I think it's appropriate to keep the entire council and the public aware. Um, <coughs> all four communities have signed off. Ideal, Jenkins, Breezy, and Pequot Lakes. Uh, Pequot Lakes is the last one. Their agreement to Pequot's at the, very, at the end of January puts us a month behind what the initial proposals were for. Part of that is uh, there's a major funding piece or bonding piece from the state of Minnesota that's called LRIP, Local Roads of Improvement Projects. Um, deadline is March 3rd. And to get that done, we're way behind the eight ball as they refer to that. So we need to move fast. Um, to expedite the process, rather than have all four communities pass special resolutions, um, they're asking that Breezy Point take the lead, and then they will ask each of the other three communities to sign a letter of support. They also look for letters of support from businesses, the school district, somebody else doing business in the area, and so those are actually coming out tomorrow, so we'll hopefully get that done. Um, the other part of it uh, I want to make sure that we, we touch on is this LRIP funding specifically because we're cities under 5,000 require the state of, Min I'm sorry, the county, the lead county to be the official fiduciary, the lead on everything else. And so that's why the two agencies are, are adopting that. Some of the other unique processes, because there are four communities and it's one RFP, all three of the RFP providers thought they would sign one contract and we would just sign off on all the bills in one thing. However, I said, no, each of the four communities has to take responsibility for their own, and they've understood that, and so they've, but they still asked us to be the lead in that meantime. So okay. um, everything else seems to be progressing very well. Um, I'm gonna let them take their time to get the LRIP funding done before we start. Uh, the first meeting was not scheduled for all the groups until March 1st, which would theoretically be April 1st now, but we'll, <laughs> we'll work on that. Other than that, we would ask that the council uh, adopt the attached resolution. Excellent, thank you. I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt resolution 062021, supporting the pursuit of the 2020 local road improvement program funding from MnDOT for the Cooperative Community Enhancement <coughs> Project. Also moved. Yeah. Uh, Council Member Maroney, do I have a second? Second. Council Member Miller. Discussion? Council Member Ball? Yeah, just, just one question in the resolution, it talks about the breezy plant will pay all the costs associated with the project. Is that <coughs> Correct. It's, it's just this is for the state of Minnesota. We've all agreed that we'll each pay our own share. Um, now, when we go forward to the next phases, that's all going to have to be worked out as part of that. Thank you. Okay. Great question. Thank you, Councilmember Bakken. None. Councilmember Maroney. Nothing. 
Councilmember Miller. No, sir. All right. No further discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. All right. Moving on to 6C. Approved police contract for Pelican Lake Township. Um, this is from our chief, Kevin Mershman. Um, of course, in uh, the background on this is 2000, the city entered into a contract for 20 hours per week of patrol time with Pelican Township. Contract is renewed each year. Uh, Chief Merchman is in, uh, proposing a $1,500 increase to the contract. Uh, the township meeting is in March. Discussion at the February meeting gives time to change if any are desired. And there are no changes to the contract other than the cost. So I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, the contract. Two. Maroney, second. second from Councilmember Bakken. Discussion, Councilmember Miller? None. Councilmember Ball? No. Councilmember Bakken? No, sir. Councilmember Maroney? Nothing further Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Mm. All right, moving on to 6D. Approved purchase of additional Microsoft licenses. This is uh, a piece um, basically, if you read uh, the report given by staff, um, is that uh, we did a review of existing IT hardware and software, was found that we had some equipment that had outdated licenses that we needed to get up to speed uh, and get back on licensed uh, through Microsoft. So this, is, uh, this was not budgeted. Uh, you can see the, the uh, price would be 8961 to get these licenses updated, and those were listed in the quote. So hopefully you've looked at that and reviewed it. Um, but uh, once these licenses are purchased, uh, we're back up to date where we need to be, and, uh, and we can move forward with that. So um, looking for a motion to approve um, the uh, purchase of additional Microsoft licenses to get our licensing up to date. Councilmember Ball, do I have a second? Second. Second from Councilmember Miller. Discussion, Councilmember Bakken? No, sir. Councilmember Maroney? Nope, it's a needed item. Okay. Councilmember Miller? No, sir. Councilmember Ball? No. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, moving down to 7A. Uh, discuss 2020-21 goals from minutes, and uh, these were all, of course, a part of our goal-setting session. Um, out of that came action items, uh, and those action items are ones that we'll be looking at moving forward with. Um, some of them are going to require committee work. Uh, the council kind of outlined that, and we talked about that. Uh, as Council Member Maroney already uh, mentioned, he spoke with the chief of police as he's the liaison for the police department from the council. And uh, that was one of those goals was to look at, um, yeah, they're, they're up, uh, but to look at a uh, opportunity to do some training or some education with regards to golf carts in the city of Breezy Point for not only uh, youth, but also adults. Um, so that was one of them. But some of the short-term goals was to create a feasibility report for the community center. Of course, uh, there's budgeted money for that. And so we want to move forward with that. And that came out of also our, uh, our, our plan that was just uh, approved last year. Replace city hall playground equipment or expand disc golf course. Of course, the park committee will be taking that up and making a decision, uh, hopefully at their next uh, meeting. Uh, create an economic development stimulus plan. This is something that I think uh, we'll be working to maybe reach out to Bladeck uh, or uh, others to potentially uh, come and give us some information. Bladeck is scheduled to be here at the, the February 1st meeting. I'm sorry, the March 1st March meeting. First meeting. Excellent. Thank you. Great. Um, and then uh, rebuild Bushman Road Cooperative Group as a standalone project. Well, we've just got done talking about a piece of that, and we know that we're going to be moving forward. Uh, develop Police Department Succession Plan. Uh, that's one that I know the Personnel Committee is going to be taking up and working on that. We're aware that we need to start looking towards uh, a replacement for that. So we'll be working towards that. Uh, another one, item six, is to hire a full-time planner or building for uh, official or combination. Again, another one the Personnel Committee is going to be looking at and making some recommendations back. Uh, seven, ongoing enforced planning and zoning golf cart parking lots, parking laws. These are things that we're going to continue to work on in a variety of different capacities through different committees uh, and, and looking at, and that's kind of where some of the golf cart piece comes out of and others. Um, 
Number eight, review alternatives for expanding grant writing applications. Uh, one of the things the council discussed was the potential of looking at somebody to help us with that grant writing um, and see what opportunities are out there for potential grants for uh, recreational trails, um, potential grants for possibly building infrastructure, um, even a possibility of roads as we move forward in the future and continue to look at that. Um, and so other things along with that line. Long-term goals, one of the big things, uh, recreational trails was one of the things that was identified as a part of the uh, comprehensive plan from the city. And so looking at walking, golf cart trails, uh, paths, biking, ATVs. Uh, another long-term goal, review all city ordinances, not just the vacation rental piece. Um, and that's really with the idea of thinking of uh, uh, making sure we're in line with where we're at as a city right now compared to maybe where some of the ordinances were. I replace city hall playground equipment expansion difficult. That's both a short term and a long term goal because while we may do one in the short term, we'll be looking at doing the other in the long term, hopefully. Um, explore option to improve internet services in the city of Breezy Point. And I think Council Member Miller, did you want to add a little piece to that? Um, yeah, if you don't, if you don't yeah. mind on the agenda, I'm, I'm supposed to speak after you. But I'll, oh, okay. I'll, well, let's get we'll get to it there. Yep, that sounds good. And then, um, and then also continue to re review alternatives to improve minimum maintenance roads. We just had our road study, so we know where our roads are, and then also we have quite a few minimum maintenance roads, and that's something that the council felt we'd address. So, um, a lot of these are considered first steps to a lot of ongoing. So, is there any? Any follow-up that the council had uh, as a part of this or any comments they'd like to make before we move on? One. Okay. It was a very soul-searching endeavor, and my hat's off to everybody who participated in that. I think there was some real progress made and some areas identified that have been a problem for a long time. Okay. I'm very grateful to everybody for that. Any other council members? I know the staff wants to make a comment. Any council members? No? Staff. I think I sent it out to the road committee, but we were notified today that we did receive the $10,000 grant from Sourcewell for the uh, Bush. <laughs> Sorry, I, I stole your thunder, Michael. On our <laughs> <laughs> but we did receive that grant. I was also notified that Jenkins did apply and received theirs. Now, they only had 6000 so it's a 50-50 yep. match. Yep. And that... Uh, Ideal actually didn't was denied because they had already applied for a grant, and so it's their funding cycles that they didn't mesh with. So I'm assuming everything that I heard is Pequot's going to be applying for the the ten thousand dollars also. So this brings our cost from twenty nine down to nineteen thousand. Beautiful, outstanding, great news, awesome. That's so that hit on two Bushman and the grant writing of your goals. Yes, <laughs> awesome. That's great, excellent. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking at moving forward. Really excited about that, and I think we've got some good things in front of us to work on as we move forward. So excited about that, and thank again the council for working towards that. I think we we did make a lot of progress and identified some great stuff. Um, 7B, update from Council Member Miller on the wireless internet meeting. Now, yeah. Council Member Miller. <laughs> I'd like to start off by commending staff for you know utilizing that $10,000 in grant funding that was available. Uh, that's a huge offset of the expense for the Bushman uh, Road project. So that's that's fantastic. Um, the Region Five uh, broadband expansion meeting took place on January 27th. It was really engaging, and I learned quite a bit. Uh, to which there may have been, you know, some differences of opinion on wireless internet uh, between uh, council members. Um, However, I learned a lot that signal propagation, even in a wide open field, uh, the high cost of ongoing maintenance, outdated technology, would really be cost prohibitive for me to push for a wireless internet umbrella of the city. It's just, it isn't feasible. Now, I do believe that there is, um, that there are opportunities for the current subscribers, Charter and TDS, to uh, look into government subsidies that would allow them to expand their current networks and, and further expand uh, uh, into, into the city of Breezy Point offering some quality internet services where it's either underserved or unserved. 
Um, so I would actually uh, look to the council to, to engage staff to reach out to the current subscribers to see what, what, what they might be able to do in the future uh, for, for, for fiber optics and, and such. Uh, I do know that CTC was present at that, that meeting. They did offer a free no charge survey if we wanted to survey the residents of Breezy Point to get feedback on what their thoughts were on how we should proceed. And uh, once again, I encourage city council to, to uh, um, have staff look into working with CTC for this, this free survey. Comments from the council on that report? Supportive. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. So we talked a little bit about this, Mark and I did it before the meeting, and I'm not sure we, Mark being new is kind of clear, but so um, staff works best when the council makes a motion as a group rather than one council member coming at a time because there's a stack of low workload. So we got to make sure if the whole council wants, Mark talked about two different items there that you, would make just a simple motion saying, A, I'd like to do this, have the council vote on that, and B, council do this. And that's all I would suggest. Okay. Well, we can definitely take action on it now, or we can, we can, uh, if you'd like. So, um, I guess I would look for a motion from the council then to move forward to have staff investigate this idea of looking at a free survey and, and potentially looking at these options for the citizens of of uh, Breezy with regards to um, uh, the government subsidies, I believe you spoke of. Yes, I'll make, uh, so move on Second. to motion, yeah. Okay, I got, a I got a first from Council Member uh, uh, Miller and a second from Council Member Maroney. Discussion? I did not second. Oh, you did, I'm sorry. You beat Council me? Council Member Bach. No. <laughs> so I got the second? Uh, you yeah. did get the second. <laughs> you gotta get quicker. You guys keep the score. <laughs> Discussion. Yes. Thank you. I didn't mean to step on your toes. No, 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 you didn't. Um, um, point of clarification, you're asking for staff to look at the government subsidies, or are you asking staff to, to investigate the survey function? The survey function Which is the... Lead to those things. Yes, yes, as related. With that, I'm going to abstain. No. Okay. I think so, yeah. Duly noted. Duly noted. Duly noted, yes, okay. Any other further uh, discussion from the council? Just, yeah, just to be clear, that other item is to have the city reach out to TDS and Charter to ask them what they're doing to get... Government subsidies, yeah. yes, yeah. correct. Okay. That is correct. That's where that clarification. So, yeah, I misspoke on that. So, thank you for correcting that for me. Uh, any other discussion? Just clarification. Is it one or two actions? That I'm not... I'm it's two that. actions. Okay, it's it is. Okay. One for staff to reach out to CTC for looking at the free survey that they would provide to the citizens of our city to find out what their views are on internet services. Yes. The second action would be to reach out to TDS and um, Charter, who provides internet services here, and ask to see what they are doing with regards to getting any subsidies to help out with abating costs for uh, providing service to our citizens in the city. Thank you. Yep, you're Can welcome. One more thing to add to that is to ask TDS and Spectrum Charter okay. for a coverage map to see what we pay for the data that they provide. Okay, so did you catch that? Patrick, I did, sir. Add to that piece, asking them for that coverage map as well. Yep, I can do okay. that. Very good. All right, any other further discussion or clarifications? No, sir. Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. All right, that brings us to item eight, which is to adjourn. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. <laughs> I have a first from Council Member Miller, a second from Council Member Ball. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>